What do I remember about that 1990 season? Um, I think just that. It was quite a special season and we had worked really hard up until there. I was a senior that year. So this had been several years in the works um, of trying to get to a point where we wanted to get to the NCAAs. Well, that team worked really hard for that goal. We had our eye on the prize the whole year. Um, that, that's where we wanted to be. We had uh, only graduated, I believe, one senior the year prior, which was Mari Brown. And uh, um, so we were bringing back quite a few um, uh, people on the roster. Uh, we certainly had the talent, uh, definitely the leadership, and absolutely the desire. Angie Bellinger and I lived together, and we had several conversations throughout the summer um, in talking about how far we could go and how good this team was going to be. We had a mission, and by definition, mission means a goal or purpose accompanied by a strong conviction. We, we knew and felt that, that we were going to be a, a serious contender. I think there was a lot of focus from the beginning of the season. I think we knew we wanted to do something special from training camp. It started right away. I mean, we saw it and felt it. The thing I remember most about that season is our start. We played, um, I think our very first match um, was against Notre Dame. Playing against a school like Notre Dame was quite intimidating. And walking into um, a match like that, I, you know, who knew, who knew what was going to happen? And uh, walking away with a win. And we played some pretty tough um, schools. Notre Dame, Santa Clara, I believe Utah. Twice we played Washington State. And, you know, playing um, against a Pac-10 school as a Big Sky um, team was, was pretty awesome, especially since we beat them both times. I was a redshirt freshman during that season, which means I got the joy of practicing against these badass women all week long and then watching them go out and beat other teams in matches. What an amazing time of our lives back then. Starting that season off 10-0 and was, was pretty incredible. One of the keys, I think, of our success that year was our practices. Um, super competitive, high energy, a lot of fun, and, and we held each other accountable at every single practice to bring 100%. I tell you what, the girls that were on that team and the coaching, I can't even express the feelings that I have. It was, they were amazing. You can have those great athletes, which we did, uh, and not be successful. I think that difference was how tight we were. Um, we were roommates, most of us roomed with another teammate, um, if not several. We were sisters, pretty much, um, and family. Most of us were out, out of town. You know, we instantly became each other's family and friends and who we went to and, you know, just relied on for everything and that transferred onto the court. I feel like we had a big trust and moved as such a, just a one unit. We knew our roles um, and accepted them and then also supported and cheered on the, the, our teammates in their roles. We were such a tight unit, and I think because of that, we trusted each other, we liked each other, we, um, I mean, we lived, breathed, and slept that sport with each other. Um, and it kept us close, and it made us close. So much, um, of our time together was building each other up and trusting in each other. I remember some of the <laughs> things that we did, like the challenges for trusting that they had us do back then. We had, to, we had to scale a wall of a building and figure out how to do it without anything but ourselves. We had to climb over the top of each other and, you know, and then jump on a table and then fall back and land in each other's arms. I mean, stuff like that. You better trust them if you're gonna be doing that kind of stuff, right? We were at the press box and we were all there. They were announcing the teams. You know, pins and needles if our name was gonna get called. And we were the last team to get um, announced. And uh, it was pretty cool when it got called. The match against Pacific was, um, it, it, it was incredible in, in every way. The fact that we were uh, in the tournament 
um, we were playing a powerhouse like Pacific. I do remember walking into that gym being a little intimidated watching the warm up. One of the assistant coaches was Debbie Green. And Debbie Green was the setter for the 1984 Olympic team. And I remember when, when we had our practice time, um, you know, before the match, uh, Debbie was there. And I, I, I couldn't, I almost couldn't catch my breath because I was a, a super fan, a, a little bit of um, being starstruck over seeing her. They were, they were pretty darn incredible. I, and, and we hadn't seen a team like that, even though our, our schedule was pretty awesome. And, and we, we did play um, against some, some great competition. Uh, we hadn't seen anyone like this. It's great when you're, when you're in a situation like that and you have nothing to lose. You celebrate every single point you get, and you kind of laugh off the ones you don't. We had a block against their outside hitter, and I was just over the moon, and uh, coach was like, CJ, come on, focus. <laughs> I don't think I did anything the rest of the game. And um, we didn't have rally score back then. Uh, thankfully, the match might have been a little bit quicker, but um, it, it just was, it, 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 it was fun to have success in, in that match, um, in the three games that we did play. Um, because like I said, we had nothing to lose and um, uh, we, we were proud of our uh, accomplishment of getting there and um, didn't mean we weren't proud and honored and knew that we deserved to be there. We made history that year. And that team, at the end of that year, decided that there was no way we couldn't do it again the following year in 91. Once we made that goal, once we broke through that barrier of playing at the next level, um, it really made a difference in the program. And it gave us the confidence that we could, we could compete at the next level. And it ultimately paved the way for our team the next year to win the Big Sky Tournament and return to the NCAAs. You know, every now and then you get this group of individuals that come together and they just click and this team, it was just one of those things that you know, the magic happened when they got together. That time was incredibly special time in our lives and it was a blip in time. So um, it goes very fast. It, it's, it's pretty neat to get together and, and talk about uh, you know, just just being able to be a, a Montana volleyball player and what being um, a Grizzly means and the stories and, you know, the lessons, uh, everything that, that we were able to experience and, and gain from being athletes at Montana is, is pretty, pretty special. I mean, it's such a, such a quick, it was four years and then it was over and um, but what you gain from it and what you get for, from it is an amazing um, experience, is an amazing friendships, um, amazing things to talk about and look back on and know that you were part of history. And um, I think when I look back on that time 30 years ago, um, I know that uh, the lessons that I learned and the growth um, that I had from being a member of that team um, has really um, been a huge part of who I am today. I'm very happy to say that I got to play for the University of Montana Grizzlies back then. That more than anything is what makes this team so special. Does it seem like it's been 30 years? <laughs> Some days it seems like it's been 30 minutes. On other days, it seemed like, yeah, it's been, it's been 30 years. So looking back, does it seem like it's been 30 years? No, darn it, it doesn't. Um, until I look at our uniforms that we had to wear, <laughs> then I'm like, whoa, that was 30 years ago. The cotton bun huggers that we got to wear um, that you guys don't get to wear now, so lucky you. It's not really the actual volleyball matches I remember really all through college, all through my time um, as a Lady Grizz, that I remember as much as the impression that my teammates left on me, um, particularly that first fall. Um, you know, I was fresh out of high school, still a girl, and suddenly I was surrounded by all these strong, independent, funny, and incredibly talented women 
for me, I didn't have heroes growing up that I, you know, had posters on my wall. So for me, these women became my role models. The girls on that team were so special. Um, there wasn't one person that needed to stand out. We played as a unit and it took us, it took us through to the very end because of that. There was, there was no one on that team that I knew wasn't going to do their part on that court. Whether they got set the ball, whether they hit the ball, whether they dug a ball, absolute faith that they were going to do their part. It's not the, the matches, it's not really, that's not what I remember. It's these women who made this like indelible impression on me. <laughs> um, ah, okay, so. In, in thinking about what made that team so special, I, I look at the list of of women that were on that roster and um, the athleticism that we had on our team was was pretty darn incredible. I had the privilege of playing opposite of Angie Billinger, uh, was her name then, um, and one of the things I, I remember uh, amongst many, but playing um, behind her and covering her is in my stance, I would, I wouldn't, I, I probably wasn't as low as I should have been, but I was crouched down a little bit. And her butt was, I think, even above my head. Angie, if, if you hear any stories about Angie, um, she could jump out of the gym. Angie Ballinger, who jumped so high, looked like she was pole vaulting across the, the net and had this, you know, just amazing, just infectious smile. You had Jennifer Moran, who at the time hit actually and since hit the ball harder than any female I'd ever seen. You had Ann Schwenke, who was this tiny, polite person off the court and then sort of transformed into this power packed in dynamo who could strike fear in your heart when she got on the court. Ann, you know, the, the leader of the team, um, definitely ran our offense. Ann Tarleton was my first roommate in that fall training camp. She uh, had this really kind of calm, quiet, kind quality. Uh, she took the time to, to talk to me and guide me through this first training camp, which was really stressful for me. Jennifer Pinkerton, who seemed to me like a movie star, uh, you know, just had this amazing star quality. I think um, our middles were seasoned. They were both seniors. They had played um, on, in the program, obviously their fourth year, Ann and Jen, um, and just really dominated and set the tone for our defense, for sure. Well, there was the duo, two of my favorite people, um, Colleen Froelich and Cindy Jones. There were just these tall, amazingly beautiful, funny women who um, just took me right under their wings and made me feel like I was part of the team. You know, Kathy Young just had this quiet, mysterious, sort of very um, self-discipline and intimidating um, kind of uber-athlete quality. Erin Parks, who had enough spirit for our whole team. My fellow redshirt, uh, long and lanky Trisha Lake, who I ended up bonding with over our shared bench time and um, you know, went on to be, to live with. And Kate Fea, who, you know, really of all of us knew what it meant to be a team player and work as hard as I've ever seen anyone work and who was also so funny, could just leave you, you know, belly laughing. And then our coaches, Dick Scott, though he was tough and um, hard on us at times, he knew the sport and he instilled it in all of us, and um, we were lucky to have him back then. Every single person on that roster made this team accomplish what we did in our preseason, our, our conference play, and then making it to the postseason. We, gosh, yeah, I love it when my phone rings and I hear CJ, so and we fall right back into place. I think when you spend that much time, whether it's on buses and in gyms and intense competition with people and teammates that they're just golden friendships that you, you know, you can't replace. And um, so I just, I'm so thankful and grateful that I have those ladies in my life. The people on that 1990 team uh, are such special, special people to, to me. And uh, when we do have the opportunity to get together, if it's at an alumni event or a girls weekend or on Zoom or whatever, um, 
we really just pick up right where we left off. And uh, it's because we formed that connection back then uh, that has really stood the test of time. When we do see each other, it's just like takes me back to when I was young again, which I think, you know, as you get older, that becomes more and more important. A lot of us have kids who are in college and are high school and growing up. And it's fun to see, um, you know, them going through the ages that we went through and, um, you know, when we were on this team together. I have to say, 30 years later, my very closest and best friends are former Grizz teammates, and what an honor that is. The girls on that team are today some of my closest, best friends, and um, we've been through a lot of ups and downs together, um, but to this day, they're all, we're all there for each other, and it's an amazing thing to have after 30 years. And who we are as friends and, and, and teammates, because that's what we are, we're still teammates. And um, there's times in life that we've, you know, been there for each other and have shared a lot of uh, good times and a lot of heartache and, and everything in between. So I will forever be grateful for that and to forever be a Grizz.